Hello guys, it's Shrimp Time here and today we are going to talk about nitrogen and some measurements that I've made in my shrimp tanks. Uh, I will also show you or you can watch in the background so some of my boa offspring and uh, some of my only boa off offspring. Sorry, uh, I took a little look uh, at this video and as far as I can see here we got the boa offspring from my boa project. So for everyone that's new on this channel, uh, please subscribe and let me know in the comment. I will thank you for the subscri subscription. Personally, it's quite important for me because with more su subscribers I get a better, better reach with my knowledge and with my videos. So guys, why the nitrogen and every form of the nitrogen in tank is so, so important? According to my experience, if you got a lot of nitrogen in different forms like NH3, NH, uh, NO2 or NO3, I will uh, call them this way because it's less confusing, you will have a lot of problems uh, in your tank. As far as you know, uh, if we are keeping living animals in our tanks, we will put the nitrogen in different forms into our tanks, like uh, the food that we feed, uh, the shrimps, the leftovers from the food uh, that are uh, lately decomposed by bacteria, uh, the pubes of shrimps, etc, etc. In correctly working uh, tank with closed uh, nitrogen cycle, uh, we got the nitrogen cycling in our tank from uh, NH3, uh, exactly NH4 plus uh, in the tank that is uh, that has uh, acid water because NH3 will uh, change in this type of water into NH4 plus, which isn't, and it's quite important, which isn't uh, toxic for the animals. Uh, NO2, which is the next step of nitrogen cycle, which is uh, toxic in a bit higher an amounts than NH3. And our final product, the Na NO3. Uh, so, uh, a lot of you uh, forget about uh, the importance of maintaining the last uh, form of uh, nitrogen, the NO3. Uh, we can get away with low levels of NO3, but if those levels uh, start getting higher, like 20, 25 ppm uh, and higher, the shrimps may have problems. According to my knowledge and my experience uh, with levels about 20, 25, uh, shrimps start to get a little problems with molting. They also don't want to uh, get buried. They don't want to uh, hold the eggs. The females may lose the eggs. And the most important thing, uh, the young shrimps uh, have lower survival rate. Uh, the tanks that I'm showing uh, to you and that I want to speak about uh, are the tanks uh, that are from six uh, months to one year old. And I've made some measurements in my tank to check the nitrogen levels in those tanks. Uh, as you know, I'm not a fan of uh, big water changes, which are one of uh, ways to get rid of uh, NO3. I usually do uh, one water change two weeks from 5 to 10 percent or if I see that something is happening in the tank I will uh, make more often uh, water changes in that tank. Uh, even though I don't do so big amounts of water changes, uh, after measuring my nitrogen levels I must say that the 
very satisfying. Uh, because uh, the normal levels of uh, NO3 in my tanks is something between 0 to 10 ppm. Uh, in Polish video I said to 5 ppm, but I had to check the measurements from JBL's test uh, for uh, NO3 and the results on other tests showed uh, me a point higher. So for example, if I got uh, 3 ppm uh, according to JBL, according to another test I got 5 ppm. So I must say that those levels can be a bit higher than I firstly assumed. Also measuring the uh, NH4 plus showed me that the levels are low because they are mainly uh, at zero level. I've made also some measurements in my tank uh, that are still still aging and uh, the NH4 level were zero and uh, NO3 levels were zero as well, which is quite interesting, uh, but I have some theories about the reason why those uh, low levels occurred. Maybe in the uh, next video we'll talk about it. Uh, as far as you know, I'm not a big fan of adding uh, nitrifying bacteria to each water change. In my opinion, guys, I must say that if you got the nitrogen cycle closed in your tank, if you don't use any medicines or any other chemicals that uh, can affect your bacteria, in my opinion, using uh, nitri nitrifying bacteria in each water, water change is senseless. Uh, why do I think like that? Uh, it's because uh, if you got a good nitrogen cycle in your tank, you got established bacteria colonies. According to some researches that were made by a lot, let, a lot smarter people than I am, uh, they showed that uh, according to your tank parameters, to your pH level, to your uh, temperature in the tank, to your uh, to the amount of uh, NH3 you got on in the tank, you will get different strains of bacteria. So uh, those bat bacteria adapt to the parameters that you got in the tank. And it's almost impossible to get the right strains uh, in your uh, in your bacteria in the bottle or in the powder that you buy that will be the best bacteria for the precise level of uh, parameters in your tank. So according to that knowledge, adding uh, those nitrifying bacteria to your uh, tank is senseless because you will add bacteria which uh, in the first matter aren't uh, live bacteria but are some sort of uh, frozen or uh, maybe hibernated bacteria or some sort of X. I don't. Sh I'm not sure how to tell it in English, but some sort of uh, not live bacteria that need a time to develop in the tank. And during that time, the, they will try to develop and they will try to breed in your tank. Uh, the colonies you got in your tank will compete with them and will compete with a success, succeed. Because, uh, because those colonies are the right colonies for these special parameters you got in the tank. So after establishing uh, nitrifying bacteria as population, in my opinion, there is no sense in adding those bacteria. Uh, but I'm a great fan of, uh, of adding different type of the bacteria that uh, that are used to uh, decompose uh, the organic matter in the tank. Uh, that are photosynthesis bacteria uh, that also use nitrogen and uh, also the bacteria that use carbon sources as the power. Uh, source to to use the nitrogen and to bond this uh, nitrogen in their cells uh, and I add different uh, different products to support those bacteria 
One type of this product is Microbe Lift Special Blend. Uh, this product contains uh, contains those bacteria, which are bacteria uh, which uh, breed very fastly and rapidly. And it also got a carbon source for your tank because uh, the manufacturer of Microbe Lift uh, Special Blend adds caramel uh, to their bacteria bottles. So I think even though that I don't have a lot of plants, a lot of fast growing plants in my tank, uh, in my tanks, and that I, I'm not basing on, on the plants uh, in my NO3 exporting uh, ways, uh, I think that I achieved those low levels uh, due to the usage of those type of bacteria. And uh, thanks to those type of bacteria and using a little bit of floating uh, plants like Salvinia natans, uh, I am able to keep my levels very low and keep my shrimps happy. Uh, and I wanted to share you with those results because uh, they are ensuring me in the way that I am keeping my tank. I can also tell you that mm, Thanks to my experience, I'm 100% sure that uh, if you are keeping high NO3 levels, uh, at some point you will get problems with breeding and at some point you will get problems with shrimp dying. One more important thing uh, which we need to remember is that if if we are trying to, to use uh, plants as the weight of exporting uh, NO3, we need to remember that those plants uh, in their cells, they bond uh, nitrogen. Uh, so the nit nitrogen is a material to build that plant. So if we need, if we want to have the full cycle of export closed, uh, every now and then we should trim our plants and take them away from the tank. Because if we will get too big, too, too high amount of the plant uh, uh, matter in the tank, then we will have the problem that uh, the tank can have not enough uh, food source for the plants and the plants may have problems with, uh, with rotting, etc. And when they will be rotting, they will release all the nitrogen they gathered due to the time back to the back to the tank. So this is another uh, quite important factor to watch out for uh, because uh, if you will forget about uh, about uh, keeping those plants uh, in handle uh, and about observing the health of the plants, you you can have some problems with uh, with uh, ammonia or uh, nitrogen uh, spikes. Quite important uh, and interesting thing uh, in my measurements is also that the level of nitrogen, especially of NO3 in the tank, wasn't uh, connected with the light. So uh, no matter what type of light I used in my tank and what des density of the plants were in that tanks, I didn't see any connection of uh, NO3 levels. Uh, I must say that uh, the higher connection that I can see with some different levels is in the amount of shrimps that we got in the tank. So if we got a lot of shrimps in the tanks, uh, those, those levels usually were a point higher uh, than, uh, than in the tanks that we got and not a high amount of the shrimps. And finally, I need to say that uh, uh, some of you that watch my uh, Polish channel and the English content on that Polish uh, channel know that I try to feed quite often. Uh, usually my shrimps are fed twice a day, the amount of uh, food they can eat in about uh, one to two hours. So uh, the levels aren't connected with the lack of feeding because 
Uh, it is obvious that if I would feed once or twice a week a little amount of the food, uh, the levels should be low as well. This is due to the fact that we won't put a lot of uh, nitrogen in uh, in their first form, uh, like in the food. Yeah, and uh, even though that I feed quite heavily, I got very nice, very good levels in my tanks. And I think this is one of the reasons why the shrimps uh, breed uh, quite uh, quite nicely and that I got quite high amount of shrimps, even though I'm using uh, small because maximum 10 gallons tanks, I would even say 7, uh, 8 gallons tanks. And the last thing uh, is about the, the nitrification in... Uh, in my uh, in my ceramics, uh, even though the prod the manufacturer of those ceramics uh, tells us that they they enhance or they they are made so that the the nitrification process will happen. In my opinion, it's quite impossible, and you need to remember that uh, when we are talking about uh, nitrification and the nitrification uh, there is a big difference in the environment uh, for the bacteria to develop one of these process because when we are talking about nitrification we have to have a place that there is a big a good uh, access to oxygen which is used to bond the nitrogen on the other hand if we are talking uh, about the denitrification, uh, we need to have the place that we got almost no oxygen. So in my opinion, it is almost impossible to get those two processes uh, going on in a single uh, media pocket. If you would like to achieve the denitrification the, the process, you would have to have a really really low flow that isn't uh, that isn't support by oxygen and this is all for today i hope that you like this material if you did please leave a thumb up subscribe to the channel and as i said uh, leave a comment saying that you subscribe to the channel i will uh, thank you personally in the comment thank you for your time till the next video see you